I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. And that's talking about how you've been on top of God's people, on top of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what that's talking about, how you've been on top of the congregation. But that's getting ready to end. Go ahead. In, in the size of the north. In the size of the north. This is the place over here in the north. This is it, right here. Go ahead. I'll ascend above the heights of clouds. I'll be like the most high. And see, you thought you were like, you said you're going to be like the most high, but you're not the most high God. You're not the one that created the heavens and the earth. And in your mind, see, you've gotten too puffed up with pride. You think you're the most high, but you're not. Go ahead. That's it. The 17. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? That, that... Talking about when they dropped the bombs over on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That's what this is saying. See, God has everything in the Bible. It's just a lot of people don't know what's in the Bible. This is when you drop those nuclear bombs on Hiroshima. You're, this place was the first one to drop nuclear bombs on, on a nation. And that's why it's coming back on you. It's, all, it's working out right now. That made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners. Here, I'll just get you up. That made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners. And see, you got, uh, you got so many of our people locked in those prison houses. See, God has everything documented in the scriptures. And you got a lot to pay for. And, you, and then he was talking about when you dropped the bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That's what the prophet Isaiah was talking about. You're not going unpunished for that. Those, you're, that goes with what he said in Galatians. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That's why you, this place is going to get nuked. Because you're the first one to do that. And you're going to get what you get. 2 Peter 1 verse 20. Knowing this verse, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. And see, none of these prophecies are of any private interpretation. This is not a secret. It's just a lot of people don't know what's in the Bible. Go ahead. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Because these men of God, they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And it was God speaking through those men. And so they put it in the scrolls back then. And then the scrolls, it got converted into the Bibles. That's right. Go ahead. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. So if our gospel be hid, it's only hid to the ones that are lost in this society. That's, that's who it's hid from, the ones that are lost. Go ahead. And whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Because see, he knows you don't believe. He knows a lot of you just don't have faith and don't have no belief. That's why in Psalms 14 it says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And they are corrupt. And they have done abominable works. So the Lord has been looking down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that understood and seek God. Go ahead. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And see, he would, he would come and shine unto you because Christ is the light of the world. He says, anyone that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. But people don't want that light. They want to stay in the mud and the mire and in, into all this darkness. Go ahead. Second Timothy 3 verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So now, this is Peter again. He said, all script, Timothy, he said, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Go ahead. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And that's why Christ said to be perfect, for I am perfect. How do you get perfect? By getting into these laws, statutes, and commandments. Then, once you start to do it, then you're walking in perfection. This is what it is. Go ahead. Romans 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. See, we're going to have hope. 
we're, our hope is in the Most High, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because that's who is getting ready to destroy this place. He destroyed every dynasty. He destroyed the Egyptian army. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. He destroyed the Roman Empire, the Babylonians, the Persians, and the Medes. He's going to destroy this place too. Go ahead. Psalm 68, 11, the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. And see, great was the company of the men that published this. They were great men, is what God is saying. Go ahead. Exodus 32 and verse 8, Exodus 31 and 18. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. And this word was written on, that, on two tables of testimony, and it was written by the finger of God. This is how the word came about. God gave the word. He's the one that gave all this word, and it's never going to change. And you can't disannul it. You can't add or delete to this. Go ahead. Deuteronomy 6 verse 7 and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up and this goes with what Solomon said in Proverbs to train up a child in the way they should go and when they get older they will not depart from it and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware to thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not. And, it's, and that, it's the, that covenant that he made with Abraham is not going to change. It's not. No matter how much you hate it, it's not going to change that covenant. Go ahead. Deuteronomy 10 verse 12. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? So now he says, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? He, he does have requirements of us. Go ahead. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. And this is for your good. This is why he wants us to do all these laws, statutes, and commandments. This is for our good. This is why God wants us to do it. But see, a lot of people, they think they're God. They're puffed up with pride. They don't want to do what he's saying. And that's why they're going to go through it. You're going to keep having problems. All those that, that uh, forget about God. Go ahead. Romans 7 verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy. See, this is Apostle Paul. He said, for the law is holy and the commandments holy and just and good. Go ahead. And just and good. See, this is what makes you holy. If you're keeping God's laws, that's when you're holy. That's holy right. is just being set apart from all this wickedness in this society. That's what holy means. All those people up there at the churches saying, oh, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. They're not doing nothing the Bible says. They're not all they, that's all lip service and hypocrisy. That's why Christ said, how be it in vain do they worship me? Teach it for doctrines, the commandments of men. Go ahead. Micah 6 verse 8, he has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee? but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. And this is what he wants us to do, to do just, do justly and have mercy and walk humbly with your God. This is what he said he wants. And, this pe and the people in this society, you don't do this. So I don't even know why you say you're a Christian nation. Christian, all that means is you're being Christ-like. You're not, and we were Christians in Antioch. That's who we were. That was our people. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. This is, this is, Solomon summed it up. He said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. He said to fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of men. But see, nobody wants to do this. This is a problem right here, isn't it? To do this, isn't it? This is why he's coming after you. He's going to get all his adversaries. Go ahead. For this is the whole duty of man. This is the whole duty of men. 
This is what it is. Psalms 119.59 I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. See, we thought on our ways and we turned our feet to the testimonies. What testimonies? The law, statutes, and commandments. What Christ put in here. Everything from Moses all the way through. Christ said, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will. O oh God, this is what it is. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. And he didn't, see, uh, David didn't, he didn't make, he didn't delay. He made haste to keep God's commandments. Romans 13, verse 11, and that knowing the time, that now it is a high time to awake out of sleep. It's high time for people to wake up out of this sleep state. Because we're in the perilous times. We're in the last days. It's high time to wake up out of this sleep state. This is this is Apostle Paul. For now is our salvation nearer than we, we when we first believed. Because our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. It's right at the door. It's right at the gate. Go ahead. Ephesians 5, Ephesians 5, verse 14. Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Because a lot of people, they're walking around spiritually dead. That's why you got that series, The Walking Dead. Because that's all that means is some ignorant person. That's all a zombie is. But that's not, they're just spiritually dead. Walking around here, they don't know Christ. That's all this is. Go ahead. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. And he told us to keep watch and pray, to always be mindful, looking around and watching our surroundings and watching things, because these are evil days. This is what Christ commanded us to do. Go ahead. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Because these days are evil. We know what time we're in. We know what time it is, because we study, and we, we study to show ourselves approved. Workers that are not ashamed of the gospel. And we go rightly divide the word of truth. Go ahead. Wherefore be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And a lot of people, they don't know what the will of the Lord is. Go to it, Psalms 40. They don't, a lot of people don't know what the will of the Lord is. But we're going to get it for you. Go ahead. Psalms 40, verse 7. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. Christ said he comes in the volume of the book. <laughs> from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Go ahead. It is written of me. I delight to do thy will, oh my God. He says, I delight to do thy will, oh my God. Go ahead. Yeah, thy law is within my heart. The laws, the statutes, and the commandments, they're in our heart. This is the will of God, to do all these laws. Go ahead. Proverbs 3, verse 1, my son, forget not my law. But let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. See, he's going to add long, long length of days and long life and peace that surpasses all understanding. That's what he's going to add to us. He gives us that peace of mind. We don't have to worry about all this stuff that everybody's worried about. Oh, that corona. And we're not worried about anything because we, we've made the most high our habitation and the most high God our refuge. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. And he said to, to bind them like a necklace. Wrap them around your neck. Put them upon your heart. This is what he said to do with this word of God. Go ahead. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to trust in the Lord. We're going to trust in him. And we're not going to lean on our, our own understanding. That's right. We're not going to lean on our understanding. He said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, is what he said in the prophet Isaiah. So we're going with his thoughts. Go ahead. And he shall direct thy path. He's going to direct our path. He's going to lead us into all truth. He's going to guide us through this valley that we've been going through, this valley of the shadow of death. But we're not going to fear no evil because we know he's with us. We're not worried about anything out here. Go ahead. Romans 6 verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And a lot of people, they may say this. They may say, oh, we, we can continue in sin because we're under grace. 
This is what some people will say. Go ahead. God forbid. But God, he said, no, we you shouldn't continue in that sin. Go ahead. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? If you dead to that sin and you've already been cleaned up of that mud and the mire, you shouldn't be going back into it. That's what he's saying through Apostle Paul here. You shouldn't be going back into that mud. Go ahead. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yeah, we established the law. He said for us to establish the law. This is what he told us to do. He's talking to his people. He wants us to keep doing the law, statutes, and the commandments. That's right. Matthew 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. He didn't, Christ, he didn't come to do away with the laws. Only thing he came to do away with was that sacrificial law. He put up his body as a sacrificial lamb. That's all he did away with. Go ahead. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law. He, he, said not, he said not one comma or one period shouldn't even pass from the law until all be fulfilled. Go ahead. And, and are we still up on, on, on the earth? When you look up, is the heaven still up there? It's still there. And we're still on the earth. Go ahead. Till all be fulfilled. And it, 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 it stays in its force. This is what Christ is saying. It stays in its course. But a lot of people say, all God's laws are done away with. You're going to get greatly confounded, all of you that hate the words of God and despise his word. You're getting ready to get greatly confounded and ashamed for this. Second Edges 9, verse 37, verse 36. For we that have received the law perish by sin, and our heart also which received it. Notwithstanding the law, perish it not, but remain it in its force. He says the law doesn't perish, but it remains in its force. Isn't this what it said? It says the law remains in its force. You're not supposed to get rid of the laws. Go ahead. Well, um, so Rock, so Rock 15, verse 17. Before man is life and death. Before man is life and death, and whether him like it shall be given him. For the wisdom of the Lord is great, and he is mighty in power, and beholdeth all things. And his eyes are upon them that fear him, and he knoweth every work of man. He hath commanded no man to do wickedly, neither hath he given any man license to sin. See, see his eyes is on everybody. He has commanded no man to do wickedly, and neither has he given any man license to sin. But see, people, he said it in Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is death. And see, this is what people are choosing. They're choosing death rather than life. Go ahead. Deuteronomy 11, verse 26, Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing and a curse. A blessing if you do these laws, statutes, and commandments, and you're going to be cursed for not doing what God says. Go ahead. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. And a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way, which I command you this day, to go after other gods, which ye have not known. And see all this idolatry. He knows about all this idolatry. This is all. And you're going to get it for that idolatry. Isaiah 66 verse 15, for behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. This is how Christ is coming. He's not coming back. He's not coming back to give no cotton candy and lollipops. To render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. The slain of the Lord is going to be many. This is how Christ is coming. He's coming to make the crooked way straight and the rough edges smooth. Isaiah 9 verse 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 13. For, for every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. See, every, everybody's work is going to be made manifest. 
because it's going to be revealed by that fire that's coming. So if you make it through that fire, then I guess you were walking in obedience if you make it through. Go ahead. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Because it's going to try every man's work.